please stand as you're able for our gathering song number 382. Christ is risen, hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another.
Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and I'll invite children to come forward. And as they do, a word of welcome to all of you who are here. If you'd, you're uh, joining us on the TV broadcast, we're glad you're here with us. If you're in person on this, we call it Low Sunday. I've been explaining it's the least attended Sunday of the church year, so you, you made it. You're extra, uh, extra help. And uh, there are a number of sign-up sheets. Now, you can't miss them because the electrician was here and he put new lighting in above the welcome table. So if before you said, oh, I couldn't read it to sign up, now you have no excuse. Um, but there are sign-ups for um, the parish bowling, so we're going to gauge if that's going to happen next week by how many people sign up for that today, so you're aware of that. And also some other events happening with uh, youth and family. But look at the ones for the summer. We're having uh, a July 1st day at Camp Hiawatha. 
We love that time last year. We're having uh, a summer trip to the Wolf Ridge Learning Center. We're having all sorts, so do look at that. And also look at the sign-up sheets for ushers, greeters, readers, all of that. So today, you guys are here and you're looking tired. Is the sugar kind of wearing off? <laughs> it's darker in here for some reason. And I think I was thinking about something that's gonna happen tomorrow. What's happening tomorrow, anybody know? Yes, ma'am. A solar eclipse. You're right. Now, do you know what a solar eclipse is? Just because Jack knows, don't you? He's looking at his Pokemon card. Oh, boy. A solar eclipse is this. Who wants to be the sun? Come and be the sun for me. Liv, you want to be the sun? You're the daughter. Who's going to be the sun? All right. Come be the sun. And, and come here. You're going to be the moon. Come here and be the moon for me. Come here, moon boy. Oh, right here. And oh, do you want to be the earth? Do you come and be the earth? The whole mother earth right here. Now sometimes, this is what happens. The sun is shining. Show them your shining face. <laughs> and it's shining and shining. And the moon, oh wait, moon, get out of here. All right, no, not too far though. Well, I'm stepping on you and I weigh a lot. All right, the sun is shining. On, on the earth, and you get all this beautiful daylight, and, and the flowers go, oh, I love the daylight, and, and even the animals wake up, and sometimes even the children wake up when the sun comes up, and, but tomorrow the sun is gonna, or the moon is gonna do something sinister. <laughs> the moon is gonna go like this, uh -huh. <laughs> boom, and he's gonna get right in the way. Is the moon a man? I guess so, the man on the moon, right? And the sun is gonna come here, and hit the moon, and it's not gonna get over here to Mother Earth. So we're gonna have, that's what an eclipse is, a shadow on the Earth, right? So there's nothing to be afraid of tomorrow. All right, you can be seated, Mother Earths, brother, son, sister, uh, all right. So tomorrow, when this solar eclipse happens, and you'll be getting on a bus from school. Did you know that? It's right around, it's gonna be coming out right about when school gets out. Um, but here's the problem. Tomorrow I think it's going to rain a little bit. And where do the rains come from? Anybody know where rain comes from? Yes, ma'am. The clouds. And if there are clouds, can you see the sun anyway? Usually not. So odds are we won't even see this eclipse. Hmm. I'm a little disappointed, because the last one that happened, you were all probably not even born, or you were just this little baby, you know, whatever. And even if you, even if it's, if it's sunny out, or that's, yeah, even if there are no clouds and we could see it, guess what you can't do? You cannot look at an eclipse. You can't look up at the sun when it's getting, because when the, when the moon comes between the sun and the earth, it does something, and I don't know what it does, because I'm not a scientist, I'm a pastor, that's why they gave me this job, and, but it can hurt your eyes. Keep your dogs inside too, it can hurt your dog's eyes. And this is what happens, we can't look at it, and if it's cloudy, we couldn't see it anyway. So, is it real? If we can't see it, is it happening? Hmm, I think it is. I mean, I, I, it's gonna be hard. Oh wait, there's other proof. Do you know what the proof is? When the solar eclipse happens, and even if we're all looking down at each other and saying, isn't this interesting? Isn't this strange? Because you know what's gonna happen? It's gonna get dark in the middle of the day. Not for very long, but it's gonna get darker and darker and dark, almost like nighttime for a little bit. And then you know what else is going to happen? When the sun gets in the way, and the, and the, or the, the moon gets in the way and casts this dark shadow on the earth, it's actually going to get a little colder for a little bit. Because the sun warms us up. When there's no sun, it gets cold, like at nighttime. And you know what else might happen if you live out in the woods? You might see little animals that normally are sleeping. Bears, raccoons, foxes. They all might come out and go, what in the world is going on out here? I didn't feel like I slept at all because they're going to say, oh, it's time to wake up because they get up at nighttime. Now, there's proof, right? Even though we can't see it maybe with the clouds, even though we're not supposed to look right at it, 
we will know that there is an eclipse happening. So if you're on the bus going home tomorrow or you're getting picked up, don't look right at it. I want everybody to be able to see me next week. Now, somebody in our gospel reading is not going to have seen somebody very important. Who do you think that very important person is? We're in church, remember? His name is J-E-S-U-S, J-E-S-U-S, Jesus. Thomas is not going to see Jesus from risen from the dead. But does that mean it didn't happen? No. Of course it happened. He just didn't get to see it. But there's other proof that it happened. Even if he doesn't get to see Jesus, do you know what the other proof is? Other people telling him, we got to see him. And those people are filled with excitement and happiness and joy. So their joy, their happiness, their excitement, and their story, the gospel of Jesus living from the dead, is proof enough for most of us. But we'll have to listen to the gospel to see if it's proof enough for Thomas. All right, tomorrow be careful with that eclipse. Now you know it's nothing scary. It's just the, the nasty moon casting a shadow on Mother Earth, all right? Before we leave, we're going to say a prayer, and then you can get your... The snacks have moved a little bit over here, so... Gracious God, we thank you that you've gathered your people together today again to hear the good news of the joyful resurrection of Jesus. Even those who haven't seen it can believe in it. We ask you to be with us today, tomorrow during the eclipse, and the rest of the week until we're gathered here again in Jesus' name, who blesses the children. Amen. Now you can get your snacks, and we'll continue with the readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now, the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsive reading of Psalm 133. How good and pleasant it is to live together in unity. How good and pleasant it is to live together in unity. How good and how pleasant it is when kindred lives together live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head, flowing down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, flowing down upon the collar of his robe. How good and pleasant it is to live together in unity. It is like the dew of Hermon flowing down upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. How good and pleasant it is to live together in unity. Stand to welcome the gospel and notice we'll sing the glory and the praise to you, O Christ. Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced 
when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in that house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And grace, mercy, and should I say it three times, peace, peace, peace be yours from God our Father and from the risen Lord Jesus, the Savior of the world. Amen. Well, we know this, that Easter is not just one day of the year. It was a good day last week, but it's really an entire season, right? So we have seven weeks of Easter, and, and really, we think of this every Sunday is a mini Easter. Every time we get together here on Sunday, it's a, it's a celebration of the resurrection. And so we continue to say, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And Barb read our first reading today from Acts of the Apostles. It's about the very early church right after Pentecost. So we're jumping ahead in time in that reading. But those very first disciples of Jesus, that small group, and it says that they had everything in common. And you could see they were selling their possessions and giving the money away, but it wasn't just their stuff, their possessions, their money. It was everything. They shared their life together. Uh, and maybe you can only begin to imagine that kind of community or that sense of belonging to a group. Um, maybe you've experienced that before. Camp counselors end up having, the people in the military have that kind of close connection, sororities, fraternities, maybe you've had it. But, but to, to, to feel like you belong to a group, that to say, this is who I am, this is my identity. That's what they would have said. I am above everything else. I'm a follower of Jesus the Christ. I am all in. I am am a Christian. So I remember thinking about how this identity, right, how, how important that is and how in college one of my professors was a man named Bob Burns, but he was Father Burns to us. Father Burns was the head of the Religious Studies Department at the University of Arizona and Father Burns was also uh, a Catholic priest. And, and he has since died, but he was such a fun, I mean, he, he was an honest person. He just told us everything we needed to know, and he had fun doing it. And here's, he, he was often asked, so you're a Catholic priest, but you teach at the public college here at the university? And he says, well, you know, people ask me, why am I a Catholic priest? And he said, I tell them, because I'm a Catholic. <laughs> and they said, well, why am I a Catholic? He said, because my parents were Catholic. And he said, that's just how it works. And if my parents had been Lutheran, guess what? I'd probably be a Lutheran. Maybe I'd even be a Lutheran pastor. Maybe even happier. I mean, he'd, 
But that's how he said it. This, this is who I am. Because that's how life is. That, and I always thought that was really helpful to hear, especially as a young person, uh, about identity. That his being a Catholic and a Catholic priest and everything that defined him was really kind of chosen for him before he was even born. It wasn't all in his control. It wasn't something he decided, right? Uh, and I, I, I think that, well, we know this. Everyone has free will. We get to make decisions in life and about our lives. And, and you can think about your life, right? The place where you live right now. Would you have chosen Hibbing? I mean, <laughs> of all the places in the world, would you, but you, you were born and raised here, right? Uh, the people you know, the, ones, the one you married maybe, the, the job you do, a lot of that was just circumstances beyond your life, beyond or beyond your control. We call it the accidents of history or uh, attendant circumstances or whatever. It's just what it is. Right? We say the right place at the right time, or maybe the wrong place at the wrong time, however you're feeling about life in the moment. But when you think about the gospel reading here, and it's the same one appointed every, every second Sunday of Easter, they figure, hey, if you're going to show up, you better, well, why, why make you learn new things, right? So we always hear about Thomas. But first we hear about that, the group of disciples who are gathered up in that, in that upper room on the first Easter evening who get to see Jesus, the risen Christ, walk in through that locked door. And because they get to see him, they believe in him. Then we hear about Thomas, who it says was not with the group. And he didn't get to see what they saw. And he didn't believe what they believed. Now, first of all, I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting story, but I want to say this about the church, right? From the very first Easter day, we have been not individuals doing our own thing, but we've always been a community, and we've always been a community of faith and doubt from the very beginning. Uh, th there's always been people among us who believe, and there are always have been people among us who struggle or who, who doubt what they're told or who need, like Thomas, to see more proof. But remember, they remain one community. There's not a church of believers and a church of doubters. There's just the church. Thomas didn't get upset when he walked in that night and everyone was full of joy and excitement and telling him what they'd seen. He said, I was left out of the first resurrection appearance and, you know, didn't stomp out saying, you guys are a bunch of brainwashed whatevers. You're in a cult. I'm out of here. Well, we'd hear that now. And the other disciples didn't say to him, hey, Thomas, you know, if you don't believe like this, there's just no room for doubters. There's no room for people who don't share our beliefs and our joy and our experience. That didn't happen. Instead, they all stayed together. They could, and I think, not just tolerate the differences, but they expected them and they respected them. They knew. They understood it because... Right? There's nothing to be ashamed of when you doubt. They had been there moments before Thomas had been there. They just happened to be there when Jesus walked through that door. So they could sympathize. And they could be patient with him. Uh, and that's what they were. All of them were patient. They waited together, Thomas and the others. A whole week in that room. Can you imagine the discussions they must have had over and over, over dinner and playing cards or whatever they did? <laughs> You really think it happened? Or you really don't believe all of us and back and forth until Jesus returned and Thomas got to see what everybody else got to see. So sometimes I wonder, why do we call this gospel reading the story of doubting Thomas? Why don't we call it the story of the patient disciples? <laughs> or the story of the church that sticks together regardless of their very real theological differences. Because all of that's true. Sure, Thomas doubted, 
but so did everybody else. And he doubted in the company of a church that allowed for it and that got it. They understood it. And they gave him, literally, they gave him time and they gave him space to see for himself what they got to see. Now, I'll say this to you, a church 2024, to a church, we already know this. There are fewer and fewer, uh, I'll say, Father Burnses in the world, right? There are fewer people who not only claim their identity, their, their first and most important identity as Christian, but who live out that identity because it was the one their parents gave them. Or we could say, Fewer and fewer of us are, are able to say, I'm a Lutheran because my parents were Lutheran and that's just who I am. In fact, how many of us in this room right now are converts to Lutheranism? Or, right, you didn't start out a Lutheran. They don't want to raise their hand. Look at all of us. You could raise them. We're all, we're a bunch of, right? We didn't start out this way. My parents weren't this. Now there's a generation after yours and after mine and many of pe these people are coming from homes that can't say anything. I wasn't Lutheran, I wasn't Catholic, I, was, I wasn't raised in any identity, Christian or otherwise. There's something, uh, there's nothing to say this is who I am because of this is who my parents were because a lot, in, in many instances their parents weren't anything, right? A lot of people are living that Thomas experience. They didn't have that encounter. And, and if you want to, now I'm going off on a side, but if you want to know this, read the obituaries here in the Masaba Tribune. I do it every day because I want to make sure I'm not in it, you're not in it. I want to see if my colleagues are working an honest week. We, no. Um, but here's what you'll notice. Now I'm saying more and more, but almost most people's funerals are not being held in churches. But where are they having their get-togethers, their celebration of life, their, you know, it's at home, it's at a community center, it's at the bar, it's at the Elks, it's at the, but it ain't here. And, and I'm not saying horrible things about it, it's just they didn't have a church to, to connect with at the end of their life, probably because they never had one throughout their lives. These are people who are living the Thomas experience. And I say this because the gospel, if it models anything for us in our context, for who we are, it is that we need to understand where the rest of the world is at, not just physically, but spiritually, right? Which is often disconnected from organized religion. A lot of people don't trust the church for good reasons, and they don't, and they doubt what little they know about Jesus. They say, I'm not sure. And they are the very people we tend to criticize, but they're the very people we need to be the most patient with. We need to give them not just space and time, but our space and our time, and to respect their doubts and to expect their differences. Because that's the only way Thomas was able to meet the risen Christ. The church said, yes, Thomas, of course. <laughs> you stay here with us. You don't believe with us? That's okay. You doubt right here with us. You, you share your life with us, and together we'll see what happens. We don't call him Doubting Thomas anymore. I, in the song we're going to sing, uh, which is new to all of us, but Elaine said she liked it, so that's good. How appropriate it is. There is a ball, uh, uh, in the bulb there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree. In our doubt there is believing, in our life eternity. Unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. He has risen, he has risen indeed. Hallelujah.
invite you to stand for the prayers and the peace. And in our prayers, we also dedicate these pyramids, uh, banners, and vestments that Gloria Maris created for us. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. And we also pray for the blessing of God on these pyramids, banners, and vestments which we dedicate to God's glory. For the church reborn in Christ, that we may grow to maturity of faith and have everlasting life, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our bishops and pastors and all who bring God's word and sacrament, that they would be granted a wisdom that comes down from above and grace to faithfully fulfill their calling, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church in our works of mercy, that we would be united in the common life and the love of our Savior, and to share that life and love with those in need, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who make, administer, and judge the laws of our land, that they would be given wisdom, integrity, and honor to serve according to God's goodwill, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For Ryan Johnson, we thank you for the time she has shared with us in her work in this parish. As she has been a blessing to us, so now send her forth to be a blessing to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are troubled in any way, that Christ would continue to bring his gladness, his comforting presence, and holy peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for your blessing to come upon these pyramids, banners, and vestments, which we set apart today, that they may adorn this house, show us the beauty of holiness, and so proclaim the glory of your majesty, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share the peace as we prepare to receive the sacrament. should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the
You are indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You loved the world so much that you gave your only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have everlasting life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command that we love one another, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we pray, O Lord, as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I'll ask the communion assistant and the acolyte to come forward. body of Christ is given for you.
body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the whole world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand for the blessing. Uh, words of thanks again to those of you who helped out today uh, and those who helped last week. Before I forget, uh, we had all sorts of help with the Easter egg hunt. Kids helped. You brought stuff. Barb and Mary brought a ton of stuff, so thank you for that. And uh, th thanks this week uh, for those who are serving fellowship and we're celebrating Ryan's work with us here four and a half years. We'll talk more about that in the fellowship hall, but just encourage you to join us in there. There's a lot of cake, and uh, we know you like cake. That's why we brought it. So our last song, by the way, Thankful Hearts and Voices, it'll be familiar if you were a Lutheran because your parents were Lutheran. Um, <laughs> Because we're singing stuff that's 50, 60 years old. But uh, we'll sing it through twice today, and then we'll just sing it in Easter as our sending song. But twice today, so we hear it. The Lord be with you. The blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.